срок девственности. Like when we met, I thought you were from England, uh, and that threw me off a little bit. Бабушкас. Бабушкас. Your бабушкас are great. You need склонения. And that is, as I say, ужас. Да я только спросит. Всем привет! С вами Женя Иванова, преподаватель и accent coach с 15-летним опытом. Я обожаю английский и заряжаю этой любовью вас. Я веду блог Rock Me English, где рассказываю просто о сложном. Как же овладеть красивым произношением, как поставить британский акцент и почему это важно. А еще я веду телеграм-канал Дневник фонетистки, где есть все от моего личного дневника до английских скороговорок. Подписывайтесь, пожалуйста, буду рада новым гостям. Сейчас вы на моем видео подкасте, где мы обсуждаем самые high requested темы с интереснейшими гостями. Если вы хотите больше узнать о техниках постановки произношения, о разных региональных акцентах английского и о том, как качественно поднять свой язык на новый уровень, то вы по адресу. Приятного просмотра и сразу по-блогерски хочу вас попросить, пожалуйста, подпишитесь, поставьте лайк под этим видео, потому что это бустнет просмотры и принесет немножко тепла в мое сердечко, а значит, все не зря. И сегодня в студии со мной интереснейший человек, человек ренессанса, так сказать, мой дорогой друг, актер, преподаватель и звезда ТВ-шоу из Ирландии Ричард Брефней Муган. И сегодня hey. мы узнаем его главные секреты. Hello, hello, Brefney. Thank you, Cheers. Yeah, thank you for coming. It's a bit early in the morning to be called a Renaissance man, but I'll take it. Okay. Cheers. <laughs> All right, mm. so tell us, you graduated from mm. Harvard with a degree in biology, mm -hmm. but you are actually an actor and a musician. So how come? Yeah. Tell us your story, how that all happened. Well, the Latin word uh, carus means wheeled vehicle, yeah? Yep. And that's where we get the word career from. So this idea that you're going from here to there, all this, it's not a straight line. So I got my degree in America, I came back to Ireland. Um, we in the West generally study some subject which we're passionate about. We don't always use it in um, our direct career. So yeah, biology was there because I was very enthusiastic and uh, consumed by human performance and sport. Uh, and that was then. And then you graduate, you come home, uh, and you have a blank canvas. And so I started a little business selling, uh, what you call it? You know, in Russian, uh, srok dystvny. Srki. It's not not srok, uh, srok dystvnysty. What's this, the... <laughs> srok dystvnysty, I'm sorry, what? In my Russian. Um, food that's about to go off. Okay. Срок. Срок годности. Срок годности, that's yes. it, yeah. So me and a business partner, we were selling this stuff legally, officially, building a little business. Uh, it lasted a few months, it was good. Uh, my business partner emigrated, and then I saw this thing for um, uh, The Apprentice, a business TV show. Mm -hmm. uh, so I had no actor's background at that stage. You don't need it, right? But um, I went into this thing. It opened my eyes to how cool the entertainment industry is. And I stayed in entertainment. I did more shows. And uh -huh. Why have you decided to move to Russia? Yeah. And why specifically Moscow? Uh -huh. Because for some of my fellow citizens, you know, it might seem like a weird, interesting choice. Yeah. <laughs> so um, how it all happened? So... I came back to Ireland in 2008 and got stuck into, you know, the entertainment business. And then in 2012, um, a lot of people were emigrating. A lot of my friends, colleagues, a lot of people were going abroad. Um, but I just went on a holiday to Moscow for New Year's in 2012. And I thought, wow, this place is great. It was amazing. Um, I'd been to Eastern Europe before. I really like Poland, some great times in Poland. And this, um, this trip to Moscow really just uh, opened my eyes to how cool, um, you know, 
let's say the capital of the Slavic world, if I could say that, is. I yeah, mean, okay. Yeah, it's controversial yeah, why not? then. Uh, yeah, so after the holiday, I went back to Ireland, packed my bags properly, moved everything over here. And yeah, just just like that. Made an and what? Uh, well, wait a second. <clears throat> and what exactly brought about this love for Russia in your heart? So what you say you went here and you say that Moscow's great and you loved it, but what exactly was so you know so beautiful about it for you? It's all the small things. Um, okay, where to begin? Uh, babushkas. Babushkas. Yeah, babushkas are great. Like, um, grandmothers. Yeah. Uh, yeah, they will tell you the truth, the honest truth. They'll, the concierges, the babushkas, they'll tell you if you're getting fat or they'll congratulate <laughs> you if you're getting thin. <laughs> you yeah, know, this so kind of stuff. So you get that a lot? Yeah, you get uh, lovely honesty from uh, the babushkas, which are at the pinnacle of uh, social respect here, which is the way it should be. Mm-hmm. And just, okay, the small things, this, right? Okay. We don't have this in the West. We, this... Um, Knopke, this push key, as I mm-hmm. call it. I don't know what the word is. Mm-hmm. Push key, you know, boom, opens mm-hmm. the door, amazing. Uh, small things like that. You go on the metro, which is clean, punctual, uh, and then you see the people on the metro, and you see them going up and down the escalators, and you see couples hugging and kissing, this public display of affection, you know, this PDA that, um, to be honest, we've kind of forgotten about it. We're too like uh, insular about it in the West. So you see, really? yeah, in, in my what experience, exactly the place. opposite. Like you know, the West is so free, and everyone's you know doing what they like and showing what they want and telling what they want. Yeah. And here, what like you know, the smiles. But you know, there's a stereotype <laughs> yeah. that in the West people smile uh-huh. basically all the time. Yes. But in Russia, we smile only when we you know, oh, feel yeah. like it. Is it true? It, it Kind of, yeah. Coconuts and peaches or something mm-hmm. like that. Hard on the outside and, and, and soft and uh, juicy on the inside. <laughs> okay. I don't know. Yeah. No, the idea... Okay, so these couples you see with the PDA, yes, they're, they're expressing themselves. They... Uh, people are in love. People are emotional. People are passionate. Um, people really care about what they're doing here, I've noticed. Yeah, people don't smile when you first meet them. It's uh, it's a cultural thing. Maybe I've read it's due to geography, the fact that when you're living in a big flat land for centuries, anybody walking up towards your uh, zone might be an invader. So oh, you're like, who's yeah. this? What do you want? <laughs> oh, that's you an know. Interesting take. Um, the I don't know. Also. It's a Hollywood thing, all the smiles, all the bubbliness, mm-hmm. all of this. The idea that you you must be in a good mood at all times is a Western That's thing. That's a bit it's, toxic. It is. Um, so here people, you know, they, they don't have this veneer as much. I see. Uh, but we're all emotional. All humans are emotional. And, and um, yeah, you, you don't expect a smile at the beginning when you meet someone, but they do expect the truth. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay, so was it difficult to get a visa mm. when you moved here? I'll tell you, no. Um, if you have a sort of a, a nerdy love of documents and you have all your documents in order, you know, it's fine. Yeah. You'll, um, you're almost... And you're a document um, nerd, apparently. I'm a big boatman. <laughs> Botanic. Okay. Um, Batan. Batan. Yes. Yeah, but uh, anyway, yes. You just go to the embassy, you put in your stuff, you get your visa and you come. Um, I was very lucky in that when I first came here, I was doing just some proofreading, copy reading, uh, under the radar life, just monk mode, just sitting at home, just doing proofreading, copy reading on a business visa. And then I got a work visa via... Um, the Institute for Law and Development, which is like a think tank. Mm-hmm. And uh, we have a thing called the BRICS Center now, which is massive. So they have this work visa um, administrative team, which is fabulous. Okay. And I'm lucky in that regard. But I know lots of um, immigrants here who, who have no problems. Uh, my buddy Peter... Um, he is an immigration lawyer. I, I know how it works. It's all very smooth. There's more documentation to get here, but it's um, 
It's doable. It's fine. Yeah. And yeah. how did you get work here? Like, what was your first job? Uh-huh. Was it difficult to get here? Well, yeah. you mentioned uh, Harvard for my undergraduate yep. degree. Yeah. Uh, it just so happens there's a good network of Harvard alumni in Moscow, and there's an active club. Uh, so I just you know looked this up, went to some of the events. Um, they, yeah, they're a great community. Um, a little bit different now. This is back in 2012, so you have um, you have some changes in 2014. Uh, and then in, in more recent years, big changes. So the community has shifted a bit. But at the time, there was all sorts of, um, you know, collaborative East-West get-togethers, uh, debating clubs, um, uh, wine tastings, all of this. That was perfect. That's where I met some like-minded um, degree-holding dudes. And um, and that was my into the business community here. So, Pasviazi, uh, right? Pasviazi, me. Sviazis, links, connections. Yeah. Massively important here. That's where the trust comes from. Well, let's just mm. you know, let's just go with the flow. And I was wondering. So you have been living here since two thousand and twelve, right? Twelve was the holiday. I went back to Ireland, figured out how I could move my books and my bags. Yeah, and, and who things. helped yeah. you move, by the way? Uh, helped me move. You have like a lot, lot, <laughs> lots of stuff with you. Heavy background. <laughs> uh, no, not no. I um, just I'll tell you who helped me move. The people here. Being, oh. Yeah, being very welcoming, very um, just very f- friendly uh, culture. Like just uh, you know, as I said, the alumni community, um, and then work. Okay, so who helped me move? Let's go back. 2012, your Russian economy was really great again by 2012. Uh, the crisis of 2008, uh, that, that ground on a lot in the west of Europe. Um, for example, I was writing for News of the World, that little column there, that, that's gone. That went, mm-hmm. you know. Um, so as, as the credit crunch, as the you know, Great Recession, as that kept grinding down Western Europe, Eastern Europe kind of recovered faster and there was more action here, more easy action, um, more just buoyancy in the economy. Yeah. And what exactly was your first job when the you economy moved here, what, what you did? Oh, proofreading, just big thick texts of uh, almost well-written English. Mm-hmm. For so like you had to kind of correct yeah. and make it sound mm-hmm. or like be perceived as a more native like language. Mm-hmm. That's that it. And that's still there today. Uh, well, I don't do that much of it, but this little micro editing stuff, like micro writing, that's still there because let's face it, people aren't hiring um, translators and copy editors. They're just using uh, GPT. And then getting someone to look at it to make sure it hasn't said anything that, okay. uh, yeah, that a computer doesn't understand. But that's still there. The, the big change was when my Russian got good enough that I could see translations mm-hmm. and I could understand exactly what the, uh, what the writer wanted. And so then I did some work with uh, translating scripts. Okay, that's so great how is your uh, Russian going? I mean, you started started <laughs> learning it uh, a while ago, yeah. I assume. And how's it going? How has it been? Okay, uh, yes, this is for people studying the language. You will understand long before you can speak, you know. Uh, you can read the newspaper, see the advertising, understand everything. That'll come fairly quick. The alphabet, the words, all of this. It's the generation, the synthesis, and the speaking that's hard. Okay. Um, Because for that you need sklenenia. Mm -hmm. And that is, as I say, ujus. That is hard. That is, um, that requires a lot of uh, hours and, you know, daily hours. I mean, that requires daily study, so. Okay, so I've got Uh some idea just for fun, you know. I'll show you some of the Russian memes Uh that contain some cultural code. Yeah. Yeah, and we'll see how well you can understand okay. them and see Great. if you get the message. Yeah. All right, so let's start with this one. Oh, that's Pilmeni. 
не слепилс. Не слеплись. Не слеплись. What does that mean? Не слеплись. Um, well, I don't know, that's Robert Downey Jr. and a bowl of pilmenis. Yeah. <laughs> so what <laughs> exactly is the idea? Um, sleepless. Don't be, wait, wait a second. Um, sl- uh, sleepy is blind, yes? Don't no, be blind. No, 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 it's not don't. about that. So when you, do you Fail. like pilmeni? Lo- I had them last night. So Fabulous, were they, yeah. they were like good oh, and uh, were they in Nutritious. one shape or were they very, very well, you know, uh, Apart from each other, <laughs> they were plump, separate. Separate, dumplings. exactly. Yes. So this is what it is about. Okay. So when you boil them, ah. and they are all separate and well, okay. and nothing is in the way of each other, you know, then it's yeah, yeah, sleepless. Yeah. sleepless. Sleepless. are like oh. sleepak, you know, lipid. I'm terrible. I yeah. failed okay. this one. Go, give me. Okay, give me another one. one. Yeah. Uh huh. Da ja tolke sprasit. Oh, I'm only asking. Yeah, so what oh. is it and what is the context? You'll have to help me with that. I, yeah, I can. <laughs> okay, so you know, <laughs> well, Russian, uh, Russian culture is famous mm-hmm. for its cues. Mm-hmm. And basically, people oh, standing the, in lines. Yeah, yes, uh, yes. Exactly. and especially in polyclinicals. Oh yes. And when you sort mm-hmm. of want to get ahead of mm-hmm. the line mm-hmm. legally, legally, you say like, "Oi, the mnie tolka sprasit." I just ah, want to ask a question. I'm not ask, going for the doctors. Yes, yeah, yeah, so yeah, yeah. this is, uh-huh. and you see this line of I babushkas, see. and one is, you know. Heading yeah. towards the beginning of the queue, and she's mm-hmm. like, "Я только спросить, я только спросить." This is quite okay. Oh, wow. So this I one's <laughs> this one's also. Oh wow. Vesgo ni rians a a re regia religiosne na paskak ah Christos Vaskres. Yes. Oh, okay. That's brilliant. Oh, that's so good. you see this uh, this. Yeah, do you know what this is all about? Well, you've got the coolidge, you've got the eggs, they look like Paul Bears, and they're yeah. on top of yellow stuff, isn't that? That's yeah. cool. So basically it's about that uh, a lot of people, so we've been briefly discussing mm-hmm. this before recording the podcast, okay. but not a lot of people are really? religious now, at, uh-huh. at least oh, yeah. they are not we following were. the yeah. rules, uh, and yeah. uh, they're not lenting, and they're not yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. celebrating, they're not going to church, but when it's Easter... Everyone's oh, queuing right. with those things, you know, with yeah. the eggs and with the uh-huh. coolidge. So it's kind of a big cultural thing, you know. It's I think it came uh, from the medieval times and even before that, yes. before the Christian times, you know, yes. this celebration of spring. So That's people right. have that in their hearts, in their uh-huh. souls. And we do love those eggs and coolidge. Oh, what's, so yeah, what's the exact got, translation? All, yeah. uh, all year you are uh-huh. not religious, uh-huh. but when Easter comes, you're like, Christos Vaskresje. <laughs> I see what you mean. Yeah, it's a bit, um, it's a bit like that. Um, yeah, the the feasts of Easter and Christmas especially, they're massive for everybody. Yeah. Even, uh, okay, yeah. so we've got another meme. Go and this might be uh, familiar to you as you're working okay. at one of the Russian universities. And we'll, we'll two. talk about two yeah. universities. Oh, that's interesting. Nice. So we're going we're gonna to talk about this a bit later. And this is mm-hmm. some of the academic background. Ooh. So it's going to be hard oh, to read. Okay, okay. Let's Когда try. Когда с деканата пришли и просят, просят, просят несколько крепкие парни, чтобы подкаст, ну подкаст, что один слеп, пок. Потаскать? Потаскать. Is that it? What's пок? Потаскать. Потаскать парты. So this is, you know, when Potaskait um, Party is when you get some, um, you know, male, yeah. physically well okay. trained 
to carry heavy stuff. Yes, yes, to carry heavy stuff. Uh-huh. And this is something you get, and I don't know, at the universities, like, for example. Yeah. Oh, we need some tables to be moved. Please, Ooh. a couple of, uh, you know, young, beautiful, physically attractive men come yes. and help us move the tables, move the chairs. I have direct experience of that. Um, <laughs> really? Okay. Yeah. I'm not surprised. No, I lecture in Mgimo, and we uh, one of the lecture rooms is, it's all just rows of tables and uh, chairs. And for, I, mean, I lecture them in media studies and, and public speaking too. So we need to move the tables to create a more of a amphitheater style zone. Uh, so this has absolutely happened in my experience. Okay. Uh, I've gotten the um, chivalrous, uh, burly, uh, Catch key. How do you say? Catch up. Yeah, to yeah. move the stuff. You're good with uh, the slang, like batan, catch key. <laughs> what exactly are you doing to improve your Russian? Let me take it. not guy. Quite authentic. Yes, music, movies, advertising. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, just absorbing it. Okay, and uh, in terms of, you know, producing, so you said uh, kind of, well, understanding and absorbing language is one thing. Yeah, it's ca- it yeah. comes fairly easily. But mm-hmm. what about, you know, expressing your thoughts and kind of producing the language? you got to get up in the ear- early morning and you gotta, you got to get good source material. So what's that? It is. Show us. Oh, no, it's a Bible, yeah. mm-hmm. you guys. Mm-hmm. Um, do you just parallel, I don't know, you... Parallel um, read. Now, I'm not a good advertisement for this method because I, I butchered those words okay. on the list. But well, no, those, if you just try- this is Bible. Those were memes. Maybe yeah. God will help well, you read. God, well, maybe. You see, the point is, if you have source material that you're into, I mean, studying it is a pleasure. So if you're studying English, exactly. uh, you know, movies in English, Hollywood or any other uh, production, uh, TV shows, just finished Succession, highly recommend it. That thing's also based on uh, Rupert Murdoch. Um, he came up earlier when I mentioned News of the World. That was okay. one of his newspapers, which went south. Um, but yes, Succession, Breaking uh-huh. Bad. My point is, good material means it doesn't feel like work. As a Catholic, uh, what better material than the Bible? So, And it's just parallel, you just read away, you know? What's this? We got John 14, 14. If you ask me anything in my name, I will do it. Uh, we'll find 14, 14. Yeah, po zdelayo. How many points? Uh, I'd say uh, 8 out of 10. 8 out of 10! Yes, if you ask me anything in my name, I'll do it. Oh, perfect. Yes. Like this, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. As, uh, as I am a phonetician uh-huh. and I mostly work with the sounds of the language, yes. I'm surely interested, uh, as a native speaker, what do you think? Are there any similar sounds in English and in Russian? Something similar in speaking? So what, uh, what is in common? What sounds are alike? What sounds are alike? Um, everything except the ooh, right? Oui. Oui. Okay. This is in, in terms of letters, yes. The, well, all the loan words are alike, which you hear a lot of. Of Latin, yes. French. Uh-huh. Well, f- okay, let's talk about the word families, which come in, in the loan words. French is massive, so we have across the road uh, your boulevard. Yes? Mm, boulevard, restaurant. Restaurant, exactly. Well, yeah, well, uh-huh. it's etymology. So to access the boulevard, you need to drive out through the Schlockbaum. So then which you is have, Germanic. Which is Germanic, yes. You have these beautiful um, German sounds. And then you might be driving through the Schlockbaum onto the boulevard uh, for your job as a top manager, yeah. right? Okay. okay, which you bring straight from English. Yeah, so those um, new words are kind yeah. of, well, international words. Yeah. And do people understand you easily 
when you speak Russian here? Uh, well, you've heard the level of my Russian, so, you know, probably not, not so great. Uh, <laughs> and, and when you speak English? Yeah, that, that depends. <laughs> that depends if I'm using my, um, you know, my Cork accent, like, talking like I'm from home. You know, yeah, well, this is different. I mean, oh, you can relax, like talk how you like, you know, talk shit. <laughs> People who study uh, proper English pronunciation and American pronunciation, which is also very clear, uh, they sometimes find it a shock when they meet someone who, who isn't as eloquent as um, uh, some of the people from the the media they consume, mm -hmm. speaking in like local uh, argo uh, with elocution level, you know, lower than um, lower than like kind of professional content. Well, it sounds the same. Generally, people make their sentences just subject, verb, object, which is nice and easy. Um, yeah, пошел. Yeah. 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 yeah, so apart from the Sklenenia um, uh, labyrinth, which you need to navigate, um, that simple <laughs> sentence structure okay. is there. That's good. Uh, so, yeah, the pronouns, boom. That's okay. nice. Yeah. How would you say my coat in Russian? My, uh, aha, right. It's maya kurtka. Maya it? kurtka, but maya kurtka. Mayo palto. Exactly. But yeah. my mm -hmm. bomber, my vitrovka. You got to yeah. learn the genders all over again if yeah. you've learned uh, a Romance language. So the French gendered words are not uh, the same as the. Do you speak Russian any words. other languages apart from English? No, a uh, bit of Latin, a uh, small bit of French. But. Uh, <laughs> speak Latin. Homo homini lupus. Oh, very good. <laughs> Can we go back to the thing you were saying? How how do you pick up words? How do you pick up vocab? So for my job, uh, or one of the jobs when you're looking at source text, you you gotta have a, a deep vocab. Um, to boost the vocab, I have a thing. Put little stickers on the phone. Right? My phone. My phone because it's always here. Oh, had I known the phone, had I Can planned I see it properly. The stickers? Are they? Yeah. Oh, they're By blank the way, for now. The screen cracked uh, yep. three days ago. Oh. Okay, I have a theory that it's okay to have a cracked screen for seven days. After that, you people you know will assume that you are uh, uh, <laughs> broke. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> personally, right? So, yep, accidents happen, things get smashed. Anyway, forget about the screen. These stickers work. So, again, give me a new word, please. A new In Russian, word? Yeah. Uh, let's, you know, let's learn... Batan, properly, Batan. the stress. Uh -huh, so good. you said botan, and said no botan. one would understand no. that. You say okay. batan. Batan. Yeah, and okay. the stress is on the R. Uh. Book for B. Yes. Bo. B, uh, book for O. Uh -huh. T. T. An. An, lovely. And the R is yes. stressed. Batan. Ah. Boom, I put it like this, batan. batan. Now, system works. Mm -hmm. because and I'll, I'll just, uh, I'll, I'll just yeah. record it f to uh -huh. insert in our video. Please do. So I'm mortified. The um, the screen is cracked. The screen, yeah, so this <laughs> is a broke Irishman here. It'll be fixed within <laughs> four, four, <laughs> um, so good. Well, sorry, yeah. four days. Uh, okay. The screen is broke. I won't publish so the it. <laughs> <laughs> the point is, the point is that... Um, so I want to check, okay, did I get your message? I check, I turn it on, aha, uh -huh. no, I didn't. So I, the screen is off. I'm still looking at the screen for another few moments, a mm -hmm. few seconds. So I can have another exposure to this little note that yep. I wrote. So it's this um, uh, sustained, repetitive exposure to something new, which okay. I have. And do you also yeah. uh, like say it aloud when you see it? Because it's important. Yeah, th this you would be a different. You don't only mm -hmm. see the word, you know, to know the word mm -hmm. and to kind of get it into your mm -hmm. system. You have to uh, expose yourself mm -hmm. to all the systems out there. So you have to mm. see it, you have to say it, yes. and you have to write it, yes. and you have to know where it, how it sort of goes into the context. Well, you're a language expert. You're brilliant, but your main love is the spoken word. Yes. Yes. My main love is the written word. Okay. So. I would be more um, enthused to make my notes based on a word that's going into my reading vocabulary. All right. So I won't need to. I won't need to practice it out loud um, 
when I'm checking the phone or whatever. Okay. Uh, yeah, uh-huh. thank you very much. So let's uh-huh. move on to speaking um, cross cultures. Cross cultures. So I know that you've got a yeah. lovely girlfriend, Russian oh, yeah. girlfriend, Maria. That's right. So uh, what language do you use when you speak to her? We have a great um, deal. It's four days English, three days Russian in the week. Oh. In general. Okay, there are some weeks off. So you but. are you are Batan yeah. indeed. That's right. <laughs> You've yeah. got it all figured out. Well, we tried doing um, we tried doing one language until six p.m. and then switching, and that was just that was just too crazy. That's so amazing. it's better just wake up in the morning. You're in one tongue, and um, then another day you might be in another one and just get that. And it's very generous. Her um, her English is better than my Russian, so I need more work. So I get that balanced day. I get okay. you know day four. So it's uh, yeah. I win. But yeah, she's brilliant. Uh, have there been any situations of like miscommunication mm-hmm. when um, you were living here? Of like course. Like Russian, English, English, Russian, some funny stories. Well, maybe with Maria, maybe with someone else yeah. at work. So uh-huh. miscommunication, misinterpretation because of the lack of cultural yeah. awareness or the lack of language knowledge. Well, some words can kind of put you in a wrong context um, like if someone was uh, taking their first brave step with something they'd be having their pervy smelly shag <laughs> okay um, <laughs> pervy I just got it pervy shag sounds like shag you know well shagging Mm-hmm. Shagtastic, baby. Jesus. Okay. Um, <laughs> all right, smell, mo- smelly, <laughs> smelly shag. Like smelly shag. Smelly, oh my yeah. god. The pervy <laughs> so one. Funny. Okay. Um, <laughs> what else is there? Well, I got confused very early on when what's uh, um when with the phrase uh, on idiot. He's on going. Idiot. He's going. He's going. Right? Yeah. On he's idiot. Like, but he's it, an idiot. Exactly. Like, yeah. It sounds close like that. Um, so. So it's tricky. I suppose for people who first move here, the strange sound is yeah. Like yes. Mm-hmm. Instead of uh, me. Mm-hmm. Yes, me. Yeah, you know, yeah, I do. Uh, All know. right. So um, as um, we briefly touched upon regional accents mm. before, so you say that people get used to, well, learners of English get used to listening to those media people mm-hmm. who have a clear and distinct yeah pronunciation mostly standard mm-hmm. like british or american yes. so what uh, but well real actual people all over the world they speak differently and in the uk oh, yes. there are like great many accents correct and yeah. how do people in the uk and in ireland <laughs> treat those accents like is there any i don't know are any accents better than <laughs> <laughs> you know, then because well, I know that uh-huh. Cork accent is the best. Oh, thanks. It's very lyrical. Um, yeah. So what you're getting at is um, okay. The movie uh, was a Bolshevik snatch. Yeah. The Brad Pitt's character, mm-hmm. where they speak like like that, like dags. You know. Um, what What's tricky, really tricky, is that. Regional accents differ in terms of vowel sounds. Well, you left your good hair at my apartment. So I jumped out of bed and all I had was me undies. Well, the demolishers, we had to go anyway. We hadn't much of a choice. To make sure that those with a disability are able to move around more freely. But can they speak Jamaican? Can you speak Jamaican? Well, not you know. only, but... Yeah, well, not only, yeah, of, course, of course. You're the expert. Okay, not only that, but in general, the tricky thing is the vowel sound. Um, in that scene, from that movie, it's dags. Do you like dags? Not dogs. Mm-hmm. So my theory is that, I mean, English is an easy language to adopt. It travels the world, uh, not just because of uh, former British colonialism, but it travels well because you have flexibility in how you say things. Um, you have, you can say dags, dogs. 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 <laughs> we'll get it. Um, Dogs. Yeah. The what's changing? Maybe what's changing with uh, modern media is people will be exposed to more user-generated content, more um, 
uh, more random, random accents. Yeah, for like people clips from, from, from China yeah. on TikTok, people yeah. from Indonesia, people from America, uh-huh. people from I don't know Ireland, Poland, wherever, yeah. and everyone speaks English because it's like a you know yeah. universal language. Yeah. So it yeah. has great many varieties. There might be some sort of like linguistic melting pot. Yep. For the different languages, it might be uh, that might be where we're heading. Yeah. So in this respect, do you think that having uh, the ability to use a standard mm. accent is a blessing or a curse? If we have this, you know, like melting pot of accents uh-huh. of English, is having a clear and sort of one standard accent a good idea? It's a bit confusing sometimes, in a good way. Uh, like when we met, I thought you were from England. Uh, and that threw me off a little bit, uh, trying to just, you know, make understand who you were. Okay. I, I thought you were from the UK. Uh, but, but that's you, anyway, yeah. Is it good to have um, good pronunciation? Yes. Do I have it in Russian? No. <laughs> I need to work on that. I mean, that... That's one thing I've noticed, just reading your memes there. Mm-hmm. Um, speaking requires, like, I don't know, constant practice. Yep, uh, yeah, exactly. So, yeah. so, you know, in sure. language, uh, in English language teaching, mm-hmm. we have those, like, four skills that mm-hmm. students need to have. It's, like, um, perceptive skills and mm-hmm. productive skills. Perceptive skills mm-hmm. would be, like, reading and listening and productive mm-hmm. skills would be like writing and speaking and you sort of yes. to boost your level you have yes. to work on all four simultaneously and when you say like i just need uh, writing this is just fine but then if you only work with yeah. writing that means that your speaking will suck yeah correct uh that's where i'm at so this has turned into like a uh i don't know have, like you, got a diagnostic. Tutor? have you got a russian tutor who helps you with russian um, not professionally, no. Okay. I need it, though. Uh, look, what's interesting is to compare, um, let's say, the professional journey of Schwarzenegger to other people. <laughs> to yourself? To <laughs> I mean, the point is he went to the States <laughs> and perfected or worked really hard in his English. I mean, he wouldn't get very far if he just spoke German with bad English. Yeah, uh, yeah, exactly. So, no, it's dedication. It's putting the time in. Um, getting a tutor makes sense because it's like getting a training partner. Having a training partner, uh, it's in your schedule, and you don't break it. Yeah, or schedule. Uh, that's it. We oh, um, <laughs> Sorry. We're, no, you're fine. You can say both. It's of one course, of those words. It was yeah. just, was it's just good. messing around. No, okay. where people where where people fall down in language, and I found is. Um, Nuance, like when you say is it schedule or schedule, both will work. But whether it's like fingers or toes, that that's important. So no one, there's stuff that doesn't make it into the books. Um, well, on your fingers hand, and toes you are fingers. all over the books. I mean, pe- well, I mean, I have I have are. people who I've met people who would, who would say like uh, you know fingers, fingers on your and, legs. Yeah, foot fingers. Foot fingers. Well, okay. My foot fingers, yes. <laughs> right. Uh, it's like the toes. So you've mentioned, uh, we have already briefly touched upon Harvard and your being there and the alumni that is great yeah, in Moscow. Yeah. So have you met any Russians in Harvard? Mm. Um, no. Lots of other Eastern Europeans, but generally Serbians, Bulgarians, Croatians, um, generally Russian kids, if they're planning to include like American education, they do it at at fourth level, they do it after their bachelors. There are, you know, people, um, for better or worse, love the idea of the MBA. yeah, the word doesn't get out enough um, to apply and, uh, let's say, go to another country for undergraduate. It's easier for me. Like, Ireland is a, you know, it's a culture of, of emigration, big diaspora, uh, big trends of people 
emigrating a lot and going away to different countries. There are only mm -hmm. four million people, four and a half. So just like the Armenians, we have a big diaspora and we have the big idea to go abroad, uh, at least for a few years. Um, the situation here with, with school students, um, they don't usually go abroad for undergraduate university, in, in my experience. Like, I, I just didn't see them in my um, university. After having studied biology, which yes. you were, like, passionate about, why did you decide to pursue an acting career? Uh, um, there's synergy there between biology and sport. So, as an undergraduate, I was rolling. Yeah, and, uh, yeah well, it's something, yes, I, I, I forgot to, I yeah. forgot to include our listeners yeah. into the context of oh, you yeah. being a professional sports I was, well. was, was, was. was um, okay. Or just high level amateur. The the context is that um, I mean I was doing two things then. I was studying uh, and I was training, rowing, right. And the, if you're studying biology, that overlaps uh, human performance. Um, it's just beautiful too uh, to study uh, zoology, physiology, anatomy, genetics, um, psychology. That, that's also biology. So that's there. Um, I read somewhere it's only like 27% of people use their undergraduate degree or directly go into that. You're not expected to go into biology. Um, but to love life, I mean, that's that's why I like biology. It's, it's everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. But it's all, sort of, you know, there's a, a bit of a, uh, well, imbalance, uh -huh. like acting and written words and poetry uh, and all this world of i don't know of art and of the soul yeah. and biology is you know this attitude to a person as a machine you know being this beauty of the body of the bone of the muscle mm -hmm. flesh and blood and you know like poetry and acting mm -hmm. and spoken word is a little bit more you know ethereal kind of and until like i mean i've heard you speak about linguistics and that's pure biology. You know, that's uh, just the architecture of your um, apparatus. Yeah, speech you know, organs. All of this. Exactly. I mean, there's, there's more overlap than you think. Um, like understanding the eyes and, you know, watching your dilation, constriction. Just understanding the, the mechanics of that makes studying stuff like stagecraft um, just that much, that much more real, more logical. The thing for me is I, I love um, the entertainment industry. That, that, that's what I found myself uh, thriving in, in mm -hmm. Ireland, and, and that includes writing. I did some soul searching uh, when I was front of camera a lot um, on Irish TV. And I was thinking, well, this is OK, but what would be better is if um, I was writing material writing things that uh, was the basis of the entertainment. Mm -hmm. The move to Russia meant that I could just work on writing and not need to worry about um, doing anything front of camera uh, because I was starting again from zero, uh, just learning how to write. Where the impetus to come back to being front of camera, to be on stage, that was COVID. So all these years pre-COVID, I was uh, in Russia just laying low, doing my writing for the old think tank and for clients. And, um, the occasional training I give, but no. Uh, COVID happened and um, the, the big desire was that when, uh, when the lockdowns were over, that I'd do more... Um, front of camera stuff in this wonderful big market or mm -hmm. not a uh, market is too crass this wonderful big uh society oh the slavic world beautiful. so yep. thank you I, j I just love the uh let's call it the slavic world where we okay. are okay and what are some uh, of the recent movies yeah. you starred in here starred in no but um took part took part <laughs> yes. um yes Ushastival. um Pavel Little Vetra, mm -hmm. big project, great production, Volorod, uh, wonderful team, 
uh, many weeks in, in Dagestan filming it. Um, yeah, th there's that. Um, there's some stage productions we've uh, we've done here. We met through the wonderful dramatist Martin Cook. Yes. And he. Um, I would love yeah. to have him as my guest here, but we we'll have to sort of you know yeah. work. W with our material a bit mm -hmm. before that, so Martin's brilliant, uh, and he has the the Flying Banana uh, Theatre uh, troupe here. Mm -hmm. So with him, we did um, a family version of uh, Midnight's uh, Midsummer Night's Dream. Yeah, I, I, I saw it mm -hmm. uh, with uh, with my kids last uh, summer, but you weren't in there. Not that uh, production, yeah, no, the one before it. Uh, Macbeth mm -hmm. as well, the Scottish play, I should say, uh, but that's another story. Um, stage, bit of stage, some ads, small part in this uh, movie, bit okay. parts in TV. The problem is, until you learn the language, you'll just be given bit parts, being the token foreigner, being yeah. the, um, uh, you know, the Razvichk. Uh, are being, you know, yeah, like um, a spy. Back to uh, Ireland. Back to so Ireland. yeah, you, you, you go to Ireland. <laughs> you start acting. You'll be fine. You're ready. You have the Thank yazik. You. Yes. Uh, but uh, it, it was mm. you who well. used to be an Irish TV star. Yeah. So you uh, took part in various, as you said, like oh. reality TV shows, advertising. Yeah. So tell us a bit about what um, you felt like. What was it all about? Like, did people recognize you on the streets? Oh, yeah, like, was yeah, it that yeah. big? So, uh -huh. like, some of your experiences on Irish TV. Um, big experience is editing. Uh, when you're in unscripted television, uh, you are free to uh, perform as you wish. Um, you're you. You're not a different character. You're you, right? But... The, the editors get carte blanche to, to show oh, what they want. Yeah. Right. And that's great. If it's ordained in their um, script, in their notes, that you're going to be the hero of the day, that's fine. If you're down as, um, if you're like shadow character is the, um, the villain or the um, bumbling imbecile or something, they'll find those moments. So... Editing is is huge in um, in that form of television. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so you have to be to make friends with the editors. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, correct. Joke. No. No. Hundred percent. Um, yeah, and what what about this uh, uh, reality show you mentioned, uh, The Apprentice? The Apprentice. Yeah, that's what, where it started. What was it about? Yeah. Like the general idea. Well, it's business. So. I had my little business selling the gun off food, or soon to be expired food, legally, uh -huh. right? And this gave me the platform to go on the business show. The winner of the uh, televised, um, produced contest gets a stajorka, becomes the stajor, ah, becomes okay. the intern <laughs> of the boss. Mm -hmm. So in the Irish franchise, um, it was. Uh, businessman Bill Cullen in the American franchise it was Trump yes oh. um, it's a fr yeah that's where it started because we had a reality show for example called the first one called Dom and yeah, Dom Dva yeah, Dom Dva, yes, so we get yes. this idea of like no. reality show being like a bunch of people living together you know yeah. getting into situations was it like that like you all <laughs> businessmen lived together and like talked business or what what the show was I mean, what, what, what was it like? Well, slow down. Uh, Damdva is great in that it made um, uh, Madame Subchak fabulous. Like, she, she was great in it. But the cast, I've seen some moments from Damdva and it's, uh, it's, it's shock uh, TV, yes? Yeah. The hostess is fine. Um, or for sure it was when uh, Ksenia was uh, host. It's different. It's a different genre. It's it wouldn't be, oh, the reality TV genre in uh, at least anything I've been involved in isn't as crazy as um, Domdva. Okay, it's fine. It's good to know. But it's not oh, smelly shag. Smelly, <laughs> pervy, smelly shag. Um, no, 
No, advertising is massive. So when you have a platform like that, you can advertise different things. Cars, sausages, websites, whatever. And that's fun. Then you get into scripted. And then you get uh, creative control. And that's what you want. Yeah. So one of your um, career paths... I like that. Working with voice uh -huh. and teaching, uh, you know, those people who want to yeah. make their English more fluent. I give uh, acting classes. Yeah, giving yeah. acting classes. So are there any specific life hacks on voice? Yes, which record. Which you can give uh -huh. our subscribers, like many, right now, right like now. on the spot. How many do you want? Uh, I don't know, one. One. Record yourself. Listen to yourself back. Listen to, um, okay, the dictaphone, mm -hmm. the voice memos. They're so useful because what they will give you is an unvarnished uh, wake-up call um, when you hear this reproduction of your voice yep. that you will not be happy with. You won't. So if you practice your speech into the dictaphone or play it back, you'll be mortified for a while. But then... Then just delete, re-record, same text. Exactly. And um, you can work with uh, vocal coaching or you could just record yourself at home until you organically make, um, make sort of uh, subconscious changes. Mm -hmm. um, that until you sound kind of okay in your own recording. So if we've time to mention it, um, my theory is that you never sound good to yourself. You never perceive yourself as, as really good in your voice because when you're listening to it back, that sound wave is traveling from uh, a device to your ear through the air, right? Whereas when you're uh, just speaking in, in life, it's exactly you're it hearing yourself with resonating your skull and through your through skull. All those, yeah. you know, those matters. Exactly. So you mind. have you have a, a beautiful sound system when you listen to your live speech, and you have nothing but air when you're listening to from the speaker to your ear. Um, so that's what's a bit discombobulating. Um, okay, so yeah, this is a yeah. great piece of advice and yeah. I, I would add that it's good to, um, I advise this to my students, you know, keep uh, audio diaries mm -hmm. or video okay. diaries. Yeah. So when you have this special private telegram channel just for you mm -hmm. and you record yourself there, like, you know, those kruzhochki of telegram, you go, you yeah. know, around the... Yeah, so this is basically a very nice idea for those who have yeah. uh, the lack of practice of like day to day English. So yes. still you have no one to, to to respond to you, but still it's great. No, that's a good idea. Uh, you want to hear yourself back. Um, you and that will force changes that um, that you won't have realized. Uh, you know, need to need to be made. Right. Some people never w listen to themselves back. Um, I was okay. following the Johnny Depp thing last year, and it, it transpired that you know he he never listened to his stuff, and he would go to he wouldn't go to um, Pirates of the Caribbean. He he wouldn't watch the screenings. We would watch him. We mm -hmm. like how he sounds, how he looks. But he Maybe it was different when he was a beginner. <laughs> Yeah. Maybe there are some life hacks yeah. uh, or, I don't know, acting skills uh -huh. that help you in your daily life that you don't use on stage, but that, uh, well, that not only help you on stage, let's put it like this, but also in your day-to-day -day life. Uh, noticing status structures in society. <gasps> Oh, I, I love that. that. Yeah. That was very useful mm. for me. That yes. was one of the most precious things that mm. I got from our acting class, mm. from Brefni's acting class. I used to go there mm. as a student. I no longer do, but I hope that in a couple of months I'll resume mm. this practice yeah, because it was great. Yeah, the and you were status, awesome. you were yes, good. status in society and all around yeah. us. So tell us. Yeah, a bit well, about you it. just see people um, who are directed. Uh, to to hold themselves and communicate in a certain way as um, characters in productions as 
high status versus low or middle. You can see it when you're watching productions, shows, whatever. You can see the status differential uh, and how people move and, and craft their, um, uh, their aura, whether to be high or mid or low status. Uh, and this is all just what actors, you know, um, are, are given to work with. And in the real world, then, you see all of this um, uh, high status, mid status, low status players. But it's people that um, they're just in one of those three because they just assume that's, uh, that's who they are. Um, so what's nice is you can, like, re-script your life stuff and yeah. you can see people um, rise in... Um, let's say, self-respect and confidence, readjust their um, status pronouncements if they're being a bit toxic and uh, nose up, as you say. Right. Kind of but there's different, uh, there's different types of status. Uh, you can go deeper some mm -hmm. other time. Yeah, but maybe you've got some pieces, like three pieces of advice oh, yeah. for a beginner actor. Yeah. As a teacher of an, oh, wow. as a teacher um, of an acting yes. skill. That's it. Well, the first one to record yourself a lot and get, as I said, yep. earlier, get into that. Um, uh -huh. Second thing is to, it's going to sound corny, but be yourself. And that means when you're given a role, don't think that you need to find something that, you know, is what, no. Um, the emotions that the role requires are already in your memory. Mm. So if you need to be, um, if you need to be, you know, Miss Morose today, Morose, um, sad, you know. Uh, Morose? Morose. Miss Morose. Miss Morose. Morose. Oh, I, learned this, I learned this two days ago, by, I forgot. Um, I should have written so. it down. Ugloomy, is it? Ugloomy. Ugloomy. Ugloomy, yeah. Groom. So, okay, your character is, you gotta be sad. Ugloomy, yes? Mm -hmm. Um you don't need to go and um you know invent some morose you just need to remember when you were morose and get fully back into that mindset that memory which you have uh not unlike stanislavski's stuff you know it's it's, it's real like that mm -hmm. memory is there you can you bring it out yeah you can bring that out okay. um okay that's point number two record yourself a lot uh, be yourself and your previous self. Um, and number three is don't worry about perfection. Like There's no right way to do it. It's just choice. It's either good or bad, but it's never right or wrong. You know? Okay, well, this um, is yeah. brilliant. Like, yeah. There's no perfection. You won't have perfection. It won't be reached. Um, you want to aim for beauty, not perfection. Right? Oh, I couldn't agree more. Thank you Okay, hey, thank you. So uh, you uh, teach acting as sort of a part-time job. And yeah. what do you teach in, you said it was like two universities already. So I know about well, me more. And what's the second well, one? Well, no, um, the, the Institute for Law and Development is a great, um, it's a great think tank. And that is within the framework of Vishka mm -hmm. here. High so, School of Economics. Exactly, yeah. So we don't teach there. But I would. Okay. I um yeah. The other university is uh, in Guillermo, mm -hmm. and I think doing a bit of work with um, uh, communication skills, uh, media studies, and public speaking. Mm -hmm. So it's media studies and public yeah, speaking. Yeah, bit of philosophy, psychology thrown in there too. But oh, um, that's nice. Thank you. Well, as you have uh, this broad background. Uh -huh in academia, uh -huh. uh, you studied in Harvard, you uh, now teach here. So what are some major differences in yes. the academic background in America, in maybe oh. Ireland or generally oh, Europe no, and in Russia? Small, Anything specific? Small, quick point. Um, the grading system in uh, the American West is on a zero to four scale, whereas here it's zero to five which is confusing for people when they're translating their mm. uh, diplomas okay. or whatever. A five? Like, you can't get a five in your view, yes. So what's, what's uh, a five like? There's that. Uh -huh. The 
Well, okay, what I do like is um, I don't really have experience with modern Western academia, but I know that it's highly ideologically tinged now. It's um, uh, the American universities are um, ideological breeding grounds, um, and they are um, they're, they're not as centrist as I would like. Mm -hmm. um, what I have found in my experience here is that academia is academia, and there's not that much um, ideology uh, in your face. Um, people are going to educational institutions to get educated, not to get uh, indoctrinated, or not to um, not to just have uh, echo chamber platforms of um, of certain. Um, ideology, which is the case in, unfortunately, um, many Western academic institutions. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's an interesting point. All right, and uh, as uh, well, students, do they mm. love you? Love. <laughs> <laughs> do they? Well, I um, do, if, if they, well, I, I, I bet they adore uh, you. Ah, uh, that's too much. Come on, you're, you're making me. Uh, uh, what no. you call it? Um, no, no. <laughs> um I no, no god no Evgeny, no way. Uh so you are this strict Batansky professor. I just like it, um yeah, when people uh, work very hard. Mm -hmm. uh, so that, that's what I demand. So what what's your style of teaching? Are you this, you know, this relaxed person mm -hmm. who would sit on a desk and like throw jokes at your students, <laughs> no? Or you are like this no. very strict and serious and demanding? Well, you've seen me in my acting classes. Yeah. With, I mean, that's a bit more anything goes than um, than big uh, institution stuff. But uh, no, my big thing is reading lists. Um, I recommend everyone. Uh, to read a lot, yeah. and um, it you know we're talking we're talking a book a week if possible. Uh, well, I think students can afford that. They have no kids, no families, oh, so well. they've got plenty of time yeah. to read. You know what they have one though. One book a week. They got one of these, which takes all their info. Um, attention. Yeah. The but the amount of screen time. Like if I, if I propose, halving your screen time and making half of that book time. Um, First of all, you get a lovely collection of books in your house at the end. Yeah, um, I totally agree. Mm -hmm. I the read a lot, and I prefer, you know, this um, tangible, tangible books. Tangible, yeah, tangible books. I don't like audio books, uh -huh. and I don't like, I, d I can't well, read electronic, well, I have some electronic devices, yeah. like Kindle and stuff, and when I can't get a book, mm -hmm. uh, well, in its original shape, <laughs> then I sort of downloaded it, but I don't. Uh, I don't like it very much. Mm. I love, uh, you know, I love it to be paper. Yes, it's better solid, for your eyes. You know, and yeah. just the experience of you know exactly. reading, turning the pages, holding it. Holding it, yes. I mean, you can, you can still do it, and especially look, what we have here is amazing um, e-commerce plus delivery, and uh, Dostavka to your door, yes. to your post office, to anything. The um, I mean, I gotta say, it's the Russian startups. It's the um, a lot has to do, with, I think, with Sibyan uh, living in Moscow. This just everything just works. As yeah. uh, so you go on a zone, you order a book, you get the book. Boom, there it is. Yes. A couple of days later, in your in your post office down the road, it's uh, it's great. <laughs> Have you ever considered well, acquiring citizenship? I'm spoiled. Um, my visa situation is so wonderful that, uh, no, uh, I haven't looked into the citizenship option. I haven't. Uh, right. And what are some well, of the things that you get uh, in Russia, in Moscow, mm. and you can't get used to it? Like, mm. you, it's for you, it's still, after having lived here for so long, it's still not normal for you it's still you can't get used to it are there any things like that i just like the um wonderfully warm cozy apartments in winter oh yes yes when you have minus 25 outside 
and inside you have um, just cozy, well insulated, really reasonably priced gas central heating. Mm-hmm. It's insane. Um, over here, everyone takes their shoes off when they enter a house. And this isn't the case in the West. And there could be many reasons for this, but no one speaks about the, um, the fundamental reason that when you take your shoes off here and walk around the flat, especially in the winter, you get nice, toasty, warm feet. Yeah. Yes, because you're blessed with um, hydrocarbons. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And what's uh, your favorite, favorite dish? Dish? Yeah, like a Russian dish. Um, borscht. Borscht. I think that borscht uh, is Ukrainian originally, they say, but uh-huh. I'm not sure. I have to do some co- some proof. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, well, Ukrainian or Russian? No, uh, Maria, we've spoken about Maria. She makes a lovely borscht, big borscht. Big red beetroot. Ooh, oh, yeah. The more beetroot, the better. You know, that gorgeous color you get. The chunky meat and the... Um, um, well, like, I'm a big fan of Irish stew, mm-hmm. so I like the idea of the meat with the um, all those nutrients from the bone, from the marrow coming out, infusing, you know, second day borscht, second day stew, fabulous. Uh, what isn't spoken about, though, is shawarma. Mm-hmm. So one of the most commonly consumed dishes, or let's say vertical, you know, mobile dishes, is shawarma. It's kebab. Like street food. Street food, proper street food. It, um it, uh, yeah, it's available everywhere. It's amazing. Nice, proper shawarma. Uh, this is Russian cuisine <laughs> in the 21st century. This All right. According yeah. to Brefne, Russian cuisine is sh- shavermo s barshom. No, <laughs> the economy runs on shawarma. <laughs> okay. So what are some typical things that you get a lot here, but you don't get anywhere else in the world? Grechka. Oh, buckwheat, yes. Buckwheat Grechinka. is... Uh-huh, it's it's a, like superfood. I was like about to say that. It's, it's a superfood, but it's marketed as a superfood in the West. It's in health food shops in the expensive section. Mm, right, but it's like bits. everywhere here. It's great. We eat it like yeah. every three days. Yeah. My kids love it. I love it's it. It's high protein also. It's fabulous. Um, yeah, buckwheat. Just if there are any um, foreign viewers that might be thinking, oh, yeah, Russia, vodka. They must get vodka everywhere. It must, get, it must be a vodka everywhere capital, right? Not really. People don't drink as much as the stereotype at all. Yeah, um, well, I mean, yeah. people just... If mm. I drink mm-hmm. something strong, mm-hmm. I'd prefer... Maybe I prefer vodka to whiskey, mm-hmm. but uh, generally I don't drink at all. But when yeah, I drink, I like I drink. I don't know. I drink wine. Yeah. But if it's like something strong, that it's like whiskey or vodka. Yeah. But people, I mean, it depends on the background. And for example, you know, this um, uh, cultural stereotype was broken with me when I went to Egypt and I was like Mm -hmm. 15 or Mm -hmm. 14 years old and there were Russian Mm -hmm. people there uh, you know drinking partying and it was relatively culturally acceptable Mm -hmm. and then there there were the English Mm -hmm. who went like crazy Mm -hmm. you know they drank like I don't know maybe it was Maybe they were not used to it. Maybe yeah. their behavior was, well, I don't know. Um, oh. I yes. think that the English, they, they are like I'm, heavier drinkers than the Russians. I'm tempted that? to say they were on a kind of a cultural uh, crusade, a rampage. Uh, oh, you know, yeah, especially boys on <laughs> in tour. Egypt, you know. Yeah. Just, like, um, very, yeah, you will you will hear English tourists before you see them. You'll hear Americans before you see them also. Mm-hmm. But you'll definitely hear English tourists with the lads when they're out in Egypt or places. Uh, where were we? Yeah, we were. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, drinking. Drinking, and, yeah, uh, so drinking you know, and no, drinking. No, so uh, no. I've got two questions actually. The first one is: okay. Why do you think uh, there are so many Irish pubs in Moscow? Aha. Uh-huh. Back to the point about the diaspora. Uh, we Irish people um, 
a lot of them emigrate and travel the world and they um yeah um genetically they're they're quite you know out there um in western in the western world and down australia way new zealand uh, all over europe england as well so um one of the great exports is the culture of um crack c r a i c <laughs> which is the irish word for fun okay um we're a fun loving race as celts and that, that is the focal point of the pub uh, of the public house What's interesting to me is how it's never been uh, made a, a franchise thing. Mm -hmm. So the Irish pub, everywhere you go, will be, you know, someone's name or like, I don't know. It won't be a McDonald's. So America exports its fast food culture yep. if, via the corporate model um, and get the good real estate and set up the brand, get the franchise, boom, boom. Uh, and everyone's eating burgers and, and chicken wings as a consequence. Um, the the Irish pub phenomenon is different in that it's usually some madman who goes to a place, starts a great bar, and then that's his creation mm -hmm. and his hub uh, for for social engagement. I mean, it, it just helps that Ireland has such great drinks to export. Yeah, um, and you know, talking um, about culture, I don't know, it's just my thing that I think yeah. that uh, the Russians and the Irish, uh -huh. they have like some common vibe. I don't know uh, what exactly, but well, I can't explain well, it. Maybe you could, as a uh, cultural specialist, do you agree with me? Or maybe yeah, I agree with you. But, um, I'm not being political here, but I, I think it's more Slavic. I think there's a, some sort of affinity, some uh, affinity between Slavic peoples and... Um, your cousins over in Western Europe. Uh, in my experience, people from Poland immigrated in, in massive droves to Ireland in the at, the at the turn of the century, this last century, you know. Um, and so there's massive integration between Poles into the Irish uh, homeland. We're quite similar. Um, I would say that Eastern Europeans, you're more, you're a little bit more serious about stuff. You know, you, you take things quite quite seriously. It's your question. I'm not sure I can answer it properly, but the cultural affinity, right? Mm -hmm. Between Russians and what I'm saying, Slavic people and um, more Western Europeans. I don't know. What, what do you think it is? I right. don't know. Maybe, as you put it, this love of fun, <sighs> you know, merriness. Ah. I don't know. We've got this uh, stereotype of an Irish person who is you know having fun no matter what when he was you know like repressed uh, by mm. the big uh, i don't know system uh, coming but still was you know dancing and trying to do his best to enjoy life maybe it's somewhere yeah. there because you know russians uh, have um, been also through some rough times. So coming to beauty, beauty. and art, Krasata. and yeah, well, I know that you are into music. You told yeah. me you have a YouTube channel or you write music. Oh, no, or what, what, like, what is it about? Tell me about your musical background. Let's go into this. YouTube channel is very small. Um, I put out a song in uh, lockdown. Are I'm you in a band or what? I am starting, well, <laughs> I'm starting the, a band called the Mujiks. I have started. Present. What's that? Perfect. Present. Perfect. No, the Mujiks is, um, it's a hopeful concept. Mm -hmm. um, the problem is keeping everybody in country. Music is the ultimate, um, it's the ultimate medium. You've got your news media. Which is, you know, doom scrolling and negative yeah, leads time, and, you know, uh, Man Bites Dog. You've got your your fiction, which is, um, there needs to be conflict in there. You know, your stories. Uh, and even non-fiction, so Titanic. You don't have much of a movie if the boat doesn't sink, right? So without conflict, you got no story. So this is media where it's, you know, it's not negative, but it's conflict. Yep. Now, with the medium of music, you don't have this. It's driven by more primordial forces. 
music is deep inside us. It's the rhythm as we walk and run and breathe. Mm-hmm. Um, it is everywhere and it can be modulated into into beautiful things. And also music videos sometimes. Yeah, the, so tell, tell me what what uh, this video is about, what the song is about. So you wrote a song. Continue. Then. Is it like the the one song, only one song you wrote or what is it like a series of something? No, this is the only song I'm uh, interested in putting out there at the moment. What is it about? Well, <laughs> it's about frustration. Um and this is fictionalized stuff, so but have a go at that, those lyrics. Okay. You want to take from me. Yeah, you yeah, picked yeah. the wrong guy. Oh, yeah, that's whatever. The yeah. only thing worse than cheating is trying to cheat, but you fail. There you go. There's a picture of me in the dictionary. I'm under better male. Yes, that's it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm better yeah. male. I'm not, I'm not into cheating so or anything. So but it's lines like that. It's just little things. So this would be... Um, it's just a little three-minute thing, uh, just with some, some little. So, what's the uh, idea nuggets? behind this beta what? male? So we've got this oh. alpha male, yeah, 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 well, yeah. Well, which is kind of, uh, kind of yeah. uh, obvious what it means. That's and right. What, what, what? Who is a better male? Well, it's the opposite, kind of. Uh, it's the guy who's. So it would be an omega male. Basically. Yeah. <laughs> yes, at the very. Yeah, <laughs> omega down at the very bottom. Then you got what's popular now is the all sigma males, but. Um, uh, I started doing this back when people were just talking alpha beta. Um, you've heard of Sigma? Sigma, those, yeah, like uh, mm. the fellowships oh. in. Ah, oh, you're getting into the fraternities. No, I mean, never mind. Um, my point was that um, I had a few decent um, riffs that came to me, uh, you know, waking up. You know that uh, early morning moment when you still hear music from your dreams? Mm-hmm. You know, I'm just going to be sitting next to the piano or next to the guitar, write some stuff down, some riffs. Uh, yeah, just package that into something and get it out there. The problem is I uh, roped my friends into this um, little music video, made lots of little cuts, and my poor friends have been waiting a while for me to get it out. So as I said, uh, Mr. Abs, where is Nikita? It's his birthday today, and I'm holding myself to this, uh, you know, swearing on on him and his his uh, his big day that this is coming out uh, simultaneous with yeah. our podcast. So let people decide. So this is Nick. That is Nick. Nick with the abs. Yeah, good abs. He's just. Um, it's what is you he call single? it. Yeah, well, you know, <laughs> uh, ask, yeah, ask in the old comments. Men only get things done when we have, you know, when we're forced to. Uh, we only fix things in the house, in general, when we okay, have to, when it well, breaks, you know pity. what I mean? Um, and I'm forcing myself to get this out simultaneous with your uh, thing. Because I've, I'm not listening to my own advice. I'm seeking perfection on this. I'm thinking, oh, I'll give it some weekend, I'll do some editing. No... It'll not be perfect, but it'll be out there, and uh, people can see Nick's abs. Okay, so yeah, muscles. for the Nick's abs, and Nick's uh, abs, yeah. yeah, great. Uh-huh. So, um, and when did you first feel uh-huh. that you were into music? So you somehow learned to play the guitar. You saw, uh-huh. well, how 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 did it all happen? Singing in pubs, age six. Oh. Yes. Okay, and have yes, you ever yes, thought yes. about you know? Uh, <laughs> Releasing an album, or have you got any career goals in oh, music? Like, man. why are you doing it? Yeah, uh, I'm doing it because it's the most beautiful medium. Um, I, uh, you know, it's um, it's the pinnacle uh, for me, for everyone. I mean, the most emotional you get. I mean, speaking from personal experience, is with is with the old iPod on. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, I do agree with you, and you know that I'm into music as yeah, well. Of course, got you've musical. got a great. You had a great band. Yeah, I had yeah. a great band, uh, Equal Rights. Hello, guys. We've uh, we have an album, and now, yeah, uh, 
the moment I am waiting at the moment, like when we are recording, I'm waiting for my album, my mm. new album, like solo. Well, uh, not really mm. solo, but it's uh, together with my co-creator, uh, my dancing teacher, Laran, yeah. who was the author of the beats. Yeah. And I'm the author of the lyrics. And so what instruments? It's beats? No, it's, it's just lyrics? beats and voice. Uh -huh. So it's okay. like hip hop, uh, you know, and it's uh, we're waiting for the distributors to publish it. So it's yeah. maybe when we are watching this podcast, we will be already on. Так что слушайте все, пожалуйста, мой новый альбом, который называется Not Enough for Heaven. So, Brefni, yes. uh, as, yes, as maybe, you know, Summing it all up, mm -hmm. something you would like to say to us? Yeah. Well, if we have a mixture of, of people with different um, language uh, backgrounds, what would be interesting to speak about is the etymology of podcast. I find it brilliant. I still listen. To, oh, my God, yeah. this is ancient. Yeah, it is. Just yeah. look at that. No, uh -huh. no, no, just show it. Look, it's yeah, there you go. iPod Shuffle. That is I used to have an iPod it, Shuffle, like, yeah. I used to have it like 15, uh -huh. 20, 15 years ago, maybe. All right, yeah, sure. Well, you can still get Jesus. them on a veto. Um, MP3 <laughs> players are fabulous. You keep the control of your music. Uh, the problem with uh, phone-based music is if they want, they can pull your content. So... Um, uh, Maria, my lovely Maria, her alarm clock just stopped working one morning because it was linked to a, f a song. Ah, oh, that, that was no was longer available. Yes, I see. And when it's a uh, song a non grata on a list, or if it's like Neil Young taking his stuff off, your content disappears. Now, if you're with a pod, an iPod, yeah, um, you sort of yeah, put it all there. They have to take it from your cold dead forever. hands. Yeah, it's there. Um, it's on MP3. It's it's yours. Uh, but it's just interesting because podcasting is so big, so brilliant, and I mean pod. It it all started with the the original um, iPod, mm -hmm. um, and then a, iPods before they, you know, the iPod Touch as well. Yeah. Um, and the the concept of having some long form audio uh, put onto your pod, um, and then, well, then you know, obviously Apple uh, dominating the phone market, communication market, podcast is understood now just as podcast, but the etymology is little pod. Well, yeah, if you're learning a language, etymology works because you get the history lesson. As well as the um, the memorization hook, mm -hmm. you know. So Family we are announce. finishing uh -huh. our oh. podcast. Yes. Well, with good. our beautiful, lovely Brefni. Oh God, uh, thank you, you thank for you. joining us, mm -hmm. and thank you for this beautiful conversation mm. it's again a bit of you know of this and that and it's not only about the language and i think mm. it's great that we've got this conversation and it went somewhere it careered we were, around <laughs> yes. yes so anyway thank you for coming thank and you, um yes Спасибо всем, кто был с нами, кто слушал этот подкаст. Пожалуйста, лайкайте, комментируйте и смотрите Video Brefni по ссылке mm. сделайте приятно человеку. So see you in the next episodes.